All right, I'd like to call this uh, public meeting to order. Uh, this is a public meeting and, and it's required under the Planning Act to afford any person an opportunity to make a representation with respect to a zoning, a proposed zoning bylaw amendment for the lands known as 1016 to 1020 Talbot Street. The proposal is to add additional uses to the range of permitted uses on the site. Before we begin, begin uh, members of the public are advised that if a person or public body does not make oral submissions at the public meeting or make written submissions to the Corporation of the City of St. Thomas before the bylaws are passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the Council of the Corporation of the City of St. Thomas to the Ontario Land Tribunal. Further, if a person or public body does not make oral submissions at the meeting, at the public meeting or make written submissions to the Corporation of the City of St. Thomas before the bylaw is passed, the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the Ontario Land Tribunal unless in the opinion in the opinion of the tribunal there are reasonable grounds to do to do so. Those wanting to be notified about the council's decision should email customer service at customer service at stthomas.ca and provide their name and address. Those who do not have access to a computer and wish to be notified can call customer service at 519-631-1680 extension zero and provide your name and address and we will get information to you. Do any of the members have a disclosure of interest concerning any of the matters on the agenda. Seeing none, then I'll ask the clerk, what method of notice and when was the notice given to the public for this meeting? Your Worship, notice was provided in the St. Thomas Times Journal on Friday, March the 22nd, 24, and in accordance with council policies, notice was also mailed to property owners within 120 meters of the subject property. Super. I'll introduce now our manager of planning services, Jim McComb, who will provide the background information on the proposal and present the draft bylaw. Mr. McComb, you're up. Thank you, Your Worship. So on this first page, uh, we have an introductory slide with an inset showing the location of the subject lands on the south side of Talbot Street, essentially opposite from the, uh, the power center site. Uh, consists of three separate properties, but as you will see in the amendment, we're in, in putting in place a parking provision to essentially, as we've done with some other properties here in the city, treat it like a campus type environment. And that's gonna help to resolve some of the parking issues that they've had in, in managing the site. So again, here's the, uh, the larger photo showing again, the subject lands in the red solid line. And what I'm putting up on the slide uh, on, the, on the slide right now is this is a concept plan with an overall parking option for uh, the owners. They've sent us about oh four or five different options, some of which show like new buildings, one shows a drive-through. But in all cases, they would be able to meet the parking requirement. So what they'll actually do with the property, they'll decide later on, and it may be subject to site plan approval. But right now, this zoning just deals with adding the uses and, and putting this parking provision in place. So part one of the amendment further amends bylaw 50-88 by introducing a new schedule. Um, it's going to zone the, the lines that, or the, the property that will be shown in heavy solid lines as C7-33. And this new schedule will be zoning map, uh, special zoning map 17-26. And here's a copy of that special map part showing the subject lands being placed into that C7-33 zoning designation. Going on with the text of the amendment, part two states that the bylaw 50-88 is further amended by adding a new paragraph 18.5.33. The area affected is a C7-33 as was shown in the special map part. The additional permitted uses that are being added at a personal service shop, drugstore, craft brewery or winery, building supply, business, entertainment center, and accessory uses. Clause C states that there be no outdoor storage be permitted and accessory to a permitted building supply business. Um, they're got in mind like a paint store, hardware, that sort of thing. Not, they're not dealing with lumber and all that stuff that would normally be uh, uh, stored outside. Clause D is minimum parking requirement of 3.5 spaces per 100 square meters of floor area. 
Finally, uh, Part E deals with zoning requirements. And it says that the area affected may consist of lots that are owned by one or more persons, or any part of the land is conveyed or otherwise dealt with the provisions of Section 18.533 and any other regulations of the bylaw, hereby deemed to comply the land as a whole into any building or structure thereon in the same manner and to the same extent as if the conveyance is not given. So long as the land and any building or structure thereon are used and continue to be used for the purpose which the development was approved. And again, this is similar to provisions we put in uh, place for other properties uh, in the city, and it allows them to treat the site essentially as a campus with the regulations being applied across all, all the properties. And finally, in anticipation of the eventual consolidation of the bylaw, uh, we have a Schedule B to the amendment. It's uh, zoning map 17, amended to include all changes made to the zoning bylaw by all amendments to date, including this amendment. And here's a copy of that Schedule B, zoning map 17, with the subject lands up here at the top of the map, going into the C733. And that is the draft of the amendment, Your Worship, if there's any questions. Great, thank you. Um, Madam Clerk, have we received any written submissions on the proposed changes? Your Worship, we have received no written submissions. Okay. Uh, we'll ask Council now, do you have any questions? And if you do so, please let me know. Council Peters. Thanks, Your Worship. It's, um... Nice to see this come forward. It's uh, kind of sad we don't have a five-pin bowling alley in St. Thomas anymore, but uh, that's uh, uh, that's happened. Does the owner of this property uh, and the applicant here have the ability to work with, like we recently rezoned the property to the east of this. Um, is there a way that the two property owners can work together because, and you know, for internal traffic movements, things like things like that, or is each property restricted to only do its own thing? Mr. Cool. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Through you to Councillor Peters, um, we can certainly talk to the applicants about exploring that possibility um, in, in working together with a neighboring property owner. Uh, a representative from the applicant is in attendance as one of the attendees, uh, Mr. Robert Brown. He is their planning consultant. So, He's hearing that right now, and perhaps he would like to make a comment. Mr. Uh, Brown, I see your hand. Uh, as you uh, unmute, please go ahead and uh, help us with the question. Uh, through you, you Mr. Worship, uh, to Council, uh, we are certainly uh, open to you know considering something like that. We had had some discussions with uh, with the former owners. Uh, of the property, um, they were not quite on the same page as we were. But uh, if there was certainly something that was advantageous for for both groups, I I don't uh, I don't see us not being uh, open to consideration of that. Great, Councilor Peters. Further question? No, you're okay. Uh, other questions from Council? Seeing none. And I'll say uh, we'd like to open the meeting to questions from the public. For those uh, attending who have not submitted any concerns or comments to the city. And if you're listening on your computer or smartphone, please use the raised hand icon in order to let us know you'd like to ask a question or make comment. And if you have a, if you've called into the meeting using a telephone, please use uh, dial star nine. That'll let us know that you're looking to to come on and the questions will be taken in the order in which they come. Um, when given the opportunity to speak, please provide your name and address for the clerk's record. So do we have any comments or questions from anyone online? I'll give you a, a couple more chances. If there's anybody online who's trying to figure out where is my raised hand button, I'll give you a minute. Please, uh, please join us, or if you're on your telephone, use star nine. One more opportunity. Do any of the council members or any of the public have any further comment on, on the uh, public meeting we're having tonight? Then I'll state that the mayor feels that there's been fair opportunity for comment from all that, that wanted to. 
And in the, so in the opinion, we have given fair opportunity to express views regarding the proposal. Everyone who's been, has been, uh, so if there are no further questions, please be advised that any person wishing further information on the actions of council regarding the passing of a bylaw for the proposed amendment should, con should email customer service at customer service at St. Thomas .ca and provide their name and address. And uh, those who do not have access to a computer and wish to be notified should call customer service at 519-631-1680, extension zero. Tell us your name and address and, and that you attended the public meeting and would like to have more information. This public meeting is now concluded.